friends. Thanks a lot for uh, attending the symposium. Uh, we're going to have plenty of them around the topic of uh, statistical consequences of fat tail. It's not a book, it's a research project. This is volume one. There are a lot of other papers outside this book. Uh, there are other people <laughs> involved in this. The idea is once you change the assumptions that people have been spoon fed with, you change the assumption, what are the consequences? People know the assumptions don't hold. They just often don't quite get the implication of that uh, change of assumption. Perturbation of the assumptions sometimes lead to completely different outcomes, conclusion methods. It invalidates a lot of stuff. So chapter three has a list of things that are invalidated in standard economics. This is not just economics, everything, but standard economics is completely destroyed. Sharp ratio goes out the window, variance is meaningless, um, mean variance representation doesn't work. Uh, there are a lot of things that fall apart. <laughs> Uh, ergodicity, of course, uh, in other words, uh, modern finance doesn't or ever doesn't accommodate the fact that your net return isn't the one <laughs> that they tell you it's going to be. Uh, and, and of course, risk management in general is completely poly based on uh, <laughs> misuse of assumptions. So, here we're going to discuss one simple point diversification in finance, elliptically. Uh, seen technically, okay? So for a long time, uh, the finance gurus held that, you know, uh, maybe the markets are not normal, but if they're elliptical, that'd be okay. Let's see how. So this is, this is a, uh, a very simple thought experiment and uh, present in chapter three to make a demarcation between mediocre stand and extreme stand. If you select randomly from the population, independent draws, of course, uh, two people and their total height appears to be 4.1 meters, what's the most likely combination? One centimeter and uh, four or nine, <laughs> 10 centimeters and four, Three meters and one tenth? No, it's going to be 205, 205. And you can see it here, you see the blue line is uh, the sums up to four, you know, on x axis and y axis. So you got to be on a blue line to uh, 4.1, okay? And, and here it's like a mountain. Uh, and uh, as you climb the mountain, you get the highest point in the mountain is at your section that you have here of 205 and 205. You see, so your highest probability. This is ISO density to call, which can be survival functions or density, it doesn't make a difference. They, they look round and you intersect at a point where they're both equal. So this is thin tails. It means that you're vastly more likely to have two times three sigma than one times six sigma. And we're gonna see how. Let's take, uh, let's, if we continue with, with the, uh, uh, thought experiment, but apply it to a different domain, namely wealth. Uh, you randomly select two people, 38, 36 million, I think, net worth. What is the most likely combination? Well, you're not going to have uh, 18 and 18. So it's either one has 38 million, the other one is 36 million, the other has zero, or one, the other has 36 million and the first one has zero. So <clears throat> when you deal with these classes of random variables, you have two different different classes and you one has a round iso density and the other one has a weird iso density. So the second one for, for two independent events of course uh, for that second one uh, we say it's not elliptical. And that's quite sufficient to cause the equivalent of fat tail, even if the original distributions are not fat tail. So the formal definition of elliptically is that you have a, uh, what you have here is here a characteristic function, the Fourier transform of the density. It's, it's, uh, has a term that is the exponential uh, uh, of, of, of the, the, in the complex domain uh, uh, that has a mean in it. And of course, 
it is a real domain, you remove the real domain, you get in a real domain that's common to the distributions we're dealing with, you have that function of a sigma. Sigma being a, a positive, definite, or, or just positive uh, uh, matrix, okay? And in our case, positive, definite, covariance matrix. So sigma is one. Okay, so the function psi is for one single sigma. Uh, of course, you can also define it with respect to the density, uh, no big difference, because as you know, the Fourier transform of a Fourier transform uh, brings you back to something very equivalent to the function itself. Start with this. Uh, so, the, so to have an ellipse, you need one sigma. And what happens in finance is we know very well that correlation changes all the time. And then you have clusters of regime, like for example, on a quiet day, correlations in stock markets typically are, are mostly coming from uh, idiosyncratic variation and, and you have independence. But on that day, oh my God, everything collapses. Or on a very large upswing after that day, is really, they're very correlated. <laughs> so you have these clusters of change in correlation, which means, <laughs> You're going to have more of the equivalent of fat tail event, even if the original distribution is not fat tail. And that's what's critical. So, the way I handle it is by taking uh, two regimes, sigma one, sigma two, or uh, in this case, uh, the, the, I mean, the, the covariance matrix. In this case, very simple. You take the binormal, or simplify because one parameter, the row, everything else being normalized, the binormal distribution. And, and, and look what, what happens if you have a regime switch or a kind of stochastic vol equivalent to uh, the covariance matrix where you split it into different Dirac's. Uh, one was probably P, one the other, one minus P. So, and, and these Dirac's are for uh, uh, row one and row two. Look at it, you see Psi is no longer elliptical. It doesn't fit the previous definition. Uh, now we got a problem. <laughs> All these assumptions are elliptically. Uh, uh, incidentally, there's a fellow who, 1982, I think, Rabinowitz and Owen, uh, the, the fellow Rabinowitz, uh, who uh, uh, came up with that idea that you know you can you know, don't worry about normality. We have elliptically, we're fine. The illustration is this regime switch gives you these, as you can see. Look at this cross. The more the more apart the sigmas are, the more we have this effect. Now. Of course, there is evidence of non-ellipticality. First of all, there was never any evidence of ellipticality in the market. And, and you can see that uh, Bouchot is one of the, Jean-Philippe Bouchot is one of the smartest uh, people on the planet. And of course, of course, one of the smartest in finance. Finance doesn't have a lot of smart people, as you know. Um, and it says, uh, and pretty much, he wrote a paper a few years ago with Shish Portish, who came to Ruri. The first, the very first Ruri, the, the pre-Ruri that Rafael did. Um, and, 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 okay, but you don't need this paper, just look at the correlation. This is what I had done to like 2008, look. From uh, 90 to 2008, look at this. I mean, the, the, we're, we're lucky the correlation is bounded. <laughs> this one, two, so twice. It can be all over the map. So thank you very much for listening to me. Have a great day. Thanks.